Hi and uh, welcome to this new video. Last uh, two three days, uh, markets have been extremely volatile. Uh, they've been all over the place. Especially the small caps and mid caps have seen a fairly large uh, cut. And uh, during these times, I keep getting messages and emails from friends and investors on how uh, one should approach investing in in such a market. So I thought, let me you know, uh, pen down my thoughts and, and speak about it so that uh, one, it helps others and second is it also sort of uh, uh, reinforces my own learning. So, uh, what, you know, we've seen over the last, today is the third day, uh, Friday, Monday uh, and today, uh, markets have uh, been very volatile, large, uh, I mean, small caps and mid caps have seen very large, uh, you know, uh, down moves, especially uh, the PSU, defense, railway, etc. Those the stocks which had gone up a lot have seen very large corrections in the last, uh, in, in this period. And, uh, and it, it keeps, uh, you know, people want to start wondering what to do. So, uh, See, basically, if you see what what uh, is it that a stock can do or a market can do, essentially, there are only three things that happen. Either the stock goes up or it goes sideways and consolidates or it goes down, right? And you will notice that over a period, uh, markets don't go up or down uh, linearly. What that, what that means is, Every day the markets will not go up or neither will it go down. It, it typically happens uh, that, you know, markets will go up, say, for four or five days, then it will take a breather or it will, you know, go down for a couple of days. And then it will maybe go sideways for two more days and then it will go up again. And uh, that is how the market sort of behaves you know, in, in normal circumstances. So this is very important to keep in mind when markets are falling. Uh, that markets don't keep falling every day. Uh, typically, you will see a three, four day fall, then a pause, then maybe a move up. Then, uh, depending on the overall trend of, trend of the market, you will see how uh, the market actually behaves. Now, uh, the other important thing to remember is that when we are in a bull market, and typically the way I define a bull market is when uh, markets are trending upwards, right? Uh, stocks are going up and indices are going up, which is the situation more or less today. I mean, it, it, we are in an up move. So in a bull market, it is very, very normal to see very short and sharp corrections, right? We, we've, we can see very sharp falls in the market uh, for two, three days, four days uh, in an ongoing bull market. So you have to take that as par for the course. Now, when such sharp moves happen, uh, especially on the downside, what are the things that uh, we know we can do? Again, uh, there are essentially three choices that uh, uh, we have as an investor. And the first choice is my default choice, which is to do nothing. Now, if I invested uh, in a stock where I have reasonable amount of conviction, then I don't need to react to every uh, price movement, right? The problem today is twofold. You know, one, people invest without any conviction. They have no clue about the stocks that they have invested in. They've heard of it, you know, from somebody else. You know, a friend would have given them a tip uh, or they would have heard it uh, on TV or somebody on Twitter or YouTube, etc. And, and they would have gone ahead and bought that stock. So in, in, in those kinds of circumstances, it's very easy to panic uh, when the price falls because you are clueless. You don't know, you know why you've bought the stock in the first place. Uh, the other problem is that, uh, you know, nowadays what I see, especially uh, with mobile apps, you know, broker apps, or uh, the other very common one I see is the money control uh, portfolio uh, app. And everybody is glued on to those. They're constantly checking uh, the portfolio value, whether what has gone up, what has gone down. And the moment you you know do that on on uh, on an 
hourly basis or on every few minutes uh, it it prompts you to react right if you continuously bombard your mind with uh, price fluctuations and especially on days when price fluctuates a lot it's you know your mind is going to be tempted always to do something right uh, that, that's a very difficult uh, uh, you know position to be in so my default uh, action that i do is i do nothing uh, the second option which is there which is uh, if, if you have predetermined stop losses in place and they are getting triggered you need to sell right so a uh, few key points here one it has to be predetermined you should not be selling in panic uh, second is that uh, even if your stop losses are getting triggered you can always uh, you know sort of when in doubt i mean this is the maxim that i follow personally when in doubt sell half so uh, whenever you are uh, feeling that okay you know things are not going your way and maybe this was a trading position or maybe you do, did not know a lot uh, or you were just beginning to build up the position and uh, you know, prices have come down you you want to get out uh, of the position you, you can always take out one fifth i mean uh, 20 20% or 25% or 50% of the position and then wait for a couple of more days and see how things are going and then if uh, and then take a call basically so that that's the second thing i do another point to remember when you are thinking about stop losses is uh stop losses need to be determined differently for your trading bets versus your investment bets so when i am doing my uh, quant or my techno funda i will have much shorter stop losses uh, versus my investment bets where i have much more fundamental uh, you know depth of conviction so i will have much more larger uh, stop losses in those the whole idea is in your long term positions you don't want to get uh, whipsawed out of a out of a position that you have which you believe can give you uh, decent returns over the next 2 years 3 years 5 years right the third option that you can have or uh, that that you can do is you can buy more when the prices are going down now typically that is a last option for me and i essentially follow uh, the rule that i typically only average up what that means is if i have bought a position at 100 uh, it has gone up to say 120 then it has fallen back to say 110 i am probably going to uh, be in a put i i would be more than willing uh, to buy uh, this because it's 110 is higher than the average price that i have paid to buy my initial position so i am averaging up all the time uh i rarely average down uh, averaging down basically means that if you bought your position at 100 your average buying price is at 100 and the stock is now at 890 uh you buy more now the problem with averaging down is that you are always uh, you know your buying price is always going to be Uh, more than your market price so you know in this example let's say uh, the market in uh, you've bought initially at 100 uh, current price is 90 and you buy say uh, additionally at 90 then if you bought the same quantity uh, both the times your average price will be 95 and the current market price will be 90 right so you're always in a losing position whereas when you are averaging up you are always in a winning position so if you bought initially at 100 you're uh, buying more at 110 your average price is 105 and your market price is 110 so you still have you're still profitable so that's the way i want to build up my positions uh, the only uh, caveat or the only exception to that is when i am initiating a position so let's say when i'm starting to build up a position i want to let's say build up 5% or 10% of my portfolio then i will not be doing it on one day i will be staggering my buys over a period of time and uh, what we do is that what uh, we will uh, or you know i'll keep uh, buying say 1 1% of my portfolio on on uh, you know every day for every subsequent days something like that or i'll do it mechanically i'll buy it once every 
uh, once a day uh, for every day of the week or something like that. I'll, I'll figure out a uh, consistent method of buying. Uh, so these are essentially the only three things that you can do uh, in my opinion or what I do in my order of preference is uh, obviously I do nothing then uh, I'll if, if stop losses are getting triggered I'll, I'll get out uh, maybe partially or maybe fully and third is I will average up if uh, that is possible or uh, if, if I want to do it but I will average up again another point uh, I, I want to mention here is I will uh, not try to catch a falling knife if the market is falling if the stock is falling I'll let it fall I'll let it find its you know place where it can sort of um, hold its price and then I'm happier buying on the way up I know I will not uh, you know get the lowest price but I'm okay with that because I am not looking for the lowest price I want uh, I, I want to minimize my risk right because when a price is falling let's say from 100 to 90 I don't know whether it will go to 80 or 70 or 60 or 50 whereas if it has fallen from 100 to 80 and then bounced up to 85 I know that okay uh, you know it's probably on the in the short period it's on the way up okay so uh, you know that's the way I would do it now the next question that is very common is you know I have cash in the market and the market is falling and I wish to enter so what and how do we go about that so first is I what I do typically is I look at my portfolio I look at my watch list and see if there is any stock in there where you know in my portfolio where the allocation is less than what I want it to be uh, if that is the case I will I will add to that or if I have a stock in my watch list uh, and it it sort of uh, is not falling as much as uh, you know or, or it is fallen and it's found a bottom then I will probably start uh, deploying capital to it uh, I, I typically when I'm buying uh, especially in a very volatile market I will deploy my capital in four or five chunks uh, maybe sometimes even more if the market is very volatile so let's say I have 100 rupees to deploy in this month what I will think is okay uh, I roughly have 20 to 20 two days of trading days and if the market is very volatile one in three days is going to be a down day right so roughly I will get say eight days or seven days where uh, markets will go down so I will divide it into seven chunks and uh, 100 rupees I will you know sort of uh, break it up into seven parts and uh, deploy one seventh of 100 every uh, day the market uh, the market is down that is the way I would sort of go about it and uh, if if there's no one stock that I would want to get into I will probably get into uh, my entire portfolio so proportionately I will buy uh, the other question that is also very common is if some stocks are falling more than others uh, should I buy more of those so some uh, stock uh, has fallen 5%, other has fallen 10%. So should I buy more of, uh, you know, the, the one which has fallen 10%. Now that is going to be a function of the conviction that you have, right? And it is going to be a function of the allocation that you've thought about. Now when a stock falls, say 10% uh, and another stock falls uh, 5% and if you had both at the same allocation initially, before the market fell, uh, the allocation for this, the first one which has fallen more is going to get lesser, right? So if you have equal conviction, you may want to top that up more than the other, right? So it's all a function of your conviction and allocation. Okay. Uh, the other important thing to understand is when, uh, you know, in, in the current environment of the market, what we are seeing is that we are seeing a pretty regular sector rotation so stocks which have gone up a lot are the ones where we see more correction so in in this uh, last two three days you would have seen psu stocks you know railways defense etc fall more than uh, these some of the other areas 
which, where the, the rise also had not been so meteoric. So stuff which has gone up very fast, people tend to want to, uh, you know, sell and book profits in those. Uh, so they tend to uh, fall more also. Uh, I've always, like I said before, uh, I've believed in uh, being more prudent, letting the market stabilize before jumping in. I don't want to, you know, when the market is crashing to be jumping in because my capital is limited. I don't have unlimited capital. So I want to protect my capital and I want to ensure that the market is stabilized. Uh, it's not falling a lot. And, uh, you know, it's either finding a bottom or it has already formed a bottom. And that is when I would want to buy. It basically just improves the odds in my favor. Uh, the other question that is very frequent is uh, if uh, some stocks fall more, you know, based on the results, should I buy more of those? So let's say uh, a company that uh, is in my portfolio is not, not uh, done so well uh, in the quarterly results. And now being uh, the result season, the stock has maybe reacted uh, uh, very negatively. So do we, uh, you know, buy more? So the answer to this is very simple. These are two completely separate decisions, right? So whether you want to buy, hold or sell is a completely different and a distinct uh, decision from uh, whether you want to add, uh, you know, when the market is falling. So if, you are, if your fundamental call is to be selling a stock, Right. You would, you would want to, uh, because, you know, the results are bad or whatever, you would want to be selling anyway, whether the market is going up or down. Right. So if you, if you believe that the position that you're holding is, has uh, lost the thesis that you bought it in for, then you have to sell anyway. It has nothing to do with what the market is doing. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you you know, you should react more based on uh, the fundamental results if that is what is driving your decision. And always remember that you don't have to react to everything. Right? If you have a three year or a five year horizon for a stock and the story playing out, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to sort of uh, get out just because one quarter has been good or bad. Right? And, uh, like always, what I keep saying is this kind of a volatile market is extremely good uh, for doing SIPs. So whether it's in your stock portfolio, whether it's in a small case, whether it's uh, in a mutual fund, whether it's in your PMS, whichever way uh, it is, uh, the SIP or the uh, a, a systematic investment program is what you should be having whether you're putting money in on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, uh, whatever, uh, you know, a steady inflow of capital into the mark, into your portfolio is what is much better because it positions you psychologically uh, in, a, in a better place than putting in all your money as a lump sum. And uh, then the next day, maybe the market uh, falls 5-7% uh, or uh, and, and you can sort of avoid that if you stagger your money and put it. In. So in summary, uh, you know, markets are volatile. Uh, essentially, these are the points to remember. One is your default position should be to do nothing. Sell if your stop losses are triggered. Sometimes partial selling is a good option. Uh, when in doubt, sell half. You know, that's the maxim. If you have cash, spread out your buying. Uh, let the market and stock settle down to an extent before you start buying. And if all of this sounds uh, very complicated, just stick to a monthly SIP mode of investing and keep a long term orientation and, uh, you know, have faith in uh, the Indian stocks, Indian businesses in the Indian markets and uh, you'll come out fine. Uh, with that, let me close for today. Thanks uh, for, for spending time on listening uh, to this. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, you know, put it in the comment section or, or writing back to me. Thank you.